All right, we have just a few more parameters here. So Logic has a built-in limiter in its compressor, and that can be really handy. You don't have to use a limiter after your compression chain, which a lot of people do to control the final output. You can put it on right here. Now I found that actually it doesn't seem to work that great. It's, it's not really like a hard limit. It can clip, but I think that's intentional because the next piece of the chain is this distortion. And the distortion refers to after the output has clipped, after it's exceeded the threshold, how is it gonna process the distortion? In Logic, you can make it a soft, hard, or a clipping. This is gonna be more like a digital clip. So it's gonna be kind of crunchy sounding. And this is going to be more of an analog, like a softer, more harmonically rich sound, but you have a soft and a hard option. Let's, again, let's listen to it and see what it does to the sound. So right now it's off. Let's turn it on. Okay, so to me, it's increasing the amplitude, which makes sense because it's adding harmonics onto the signal. Um, that actually sounds pretty good to me. Let's go to the hard distortion. Okay, let's turn the limiter on. It's very subtle. What I'm getting out of the hard distortion is it's adding more pumping into the signal. Let's go to the clip. Soft is more even. It's definitely pumping a lot more with the hard distortion. The clip is very hard to discern. It sounds like it is adding some saturation, but it is more level. It's not really pumping. It's a lot more of a contained signal. So you have three different flavors there at the end once you've got your settings where you want them. How is this gonna sit in the mix? This is a really cool feature and again, use your ears. So the mix, the mix is pretty straightforward. The mix is how much compression we're actually hearing. If we have it at 100%, this is entirely the compressed signal. If we wanna reduce this to let's say a one to one ratio, that is what we would call parallel compression. So that's when we take the compressed output sound and we blend it in with the original dry signal. A lot of people use parallel compression because it is a lot more subtle. So you dial in your compressed sound and then you kind of reduce it and make it level with the original signal. And it's a lot more of a natural sound. So if you want to contain your transients, but you want it to sound a lot more natural, use parallel compression and reduce your mix output. In the old days, if you're using hardware, or still currently, if you're using hardware, you have to do this manually. So your compressed signal will be coming in off the hardware and you'll blend it in. It's gonna to print to its own track anyways. So you can either have just the compressed signal or you can blend it in to the dry track before. Again, it's a cool way to like kind of alter the timbres of sounds or inject some color into it, but without losing the originality and the freshness of the clean original take. And last but not least, we have the output gain, and that's very straightforward. So you're going to be affecting the amplitude of your signal, and this is how you're gonna control it. So this is the last stage before it hits your fader in the DAW. And so if you want more room to work with it, um, you can use this output to dial your signal in. And you saw me use that earlier.
So it's pretty straightforward. It's just a volume on the compressor itself. And most hardware compressors will also have an output control. So this is pretty, pretty standard fare. There is one other feature in the compressor called sidechain, but I think I'm going to do another video entirely on sidechain compression. In fact, that'll be the next video that we go over. We're going to go over sidechain compression. I hope this video helped to debunk the compressor. I know it's a lot of information, but just take it slow, experiment with different sources, try some of the Apple loops. Again, if you have logic, just throw anything you can find in there and start compressing it and listen to the changes in your headphones. The best way that you're going to learn is just by doing it a hundred times. Do it over and over again and see how these parameters work in real time. So thanks again for checking out this video. If you liked it, hit subscribe and check out the next one.